And so we'll look at, and you've seen this all the, uh, you have this slight technical delay, that's why I'll be going right into the math. Fiscal policy is the government directly spending in the way of the economy. It usually has to go into debt because the economy is usually going into a recession. It doesn't have the taxes, the tax revenue to cover the extra spending. So it usually goes into short run debt unless there have been government surplus budgets beforehand. But as what's happened with COVID, we went from the disaster of the housing crisis in, in, in financial crisis in 2008. Not many governments in the world have got a surplus. In fact, very few governments in the world have got a surplus of money to be spending. So a lot of countries in the world are going into debt at the moment to try to spend their way out of recession. So we'll look at, and you've seen this math all before, my friends. You've seen this math before. What we'll be making use of is, it's now called the autonomous, the government, the autonomous government expenditure multiplier. It's the same expenditure multiplier that we saw two quizzes ago, the same multiplier. Uh, just remind me, what's the equation for the, ex the autonomous expenditure multiplier? One divided by one minus over delta autonomous expenditure. The uh, delta y over delta Autonomous expenditure is going to give you the multiplier. Another way to get it is 1 over 1 minus MPC. Same multiplier. Same multiplier. Unless it's a tax multiplier. And that's our first one. So it's the same multiplier when we're talking about government expenditures increasing the amount of real GDP. But when we talk about taxes, are taxes causing people to spend more or spend less? Spend less. Spend less. So what's going to be, so the tax multiplier, what's the inequality? The tax multiplier is greater or less than zero. It's going to be less than. So the same math that we've seen before. Okie dokie. Calculate the change in GDP, one decimal, if the tax multiplier is negative 0.5 and the government changes total taxes by 100. Well, tax multiplier is M sub T, GDP, gross domestic product, capital T, total taxes. That's not the marginal tax rate, small t. This is the total amount of taxes that are gathered as for government spending purposes. Okay. Well, let's see. That's going to be M sub T. That's going to be delta T. So what do we need? Delta Y. Or delta GDP. Same, same. So. MT is going to be equal to, as we alluded to earlier, the change in GDP given the change in taxes. So how much does GDP spending change according given the change in total taxes in the economy? 
And that, apply, and that implies that the change in GDP is going to be the tax multiplier times the change in taxes. And that's negative 0 0.50 times 100. And that is negative 50.0, one decimal. Therefore, GDP will decrease 50, given a change in total taxes of 100, and a tax multiplier of negative 0 0.5. Note the negative sign. No negative sign on the quiz, you get a zero. Next, the change in GDP given the government multiplier, the autonomous government expenditure multiplier, and a change in government spending. So calculate the change in GDP, and we can have a change in Y equals change in GDP. One decimal, if the government purchases multiplier is 25, that's usually MG. Did I call it MG? I called it MG. And the government changes spending by 55, delta G. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I always like to make sure that I note the actual variable names before I do a calculation. It helps for my organization. So, the government, the autonomous government spending multi expenditure multiplier is equal to the change in GDP, or it could be the change in Y, same, same, given a change in government spending. Well, let me put, let me make that. These are the same. Y is GDP or R GDP. And that implies that the change in GDP is equal to the, the government expenditure multiplier, autonomous, times the change in government spending. That's uh, equal to 0.25 times 55. And that's equal to 1375. Therefore, GDP increases by 13.8, given an increase in government spending of 55, and a government purchases multiplier of 0 0.25. So if the government spends 55, this causes the overall amount, an overall increase in real GDP of 1375. Now, we've looked at this multiplier previously, and we were getting doubles and triples and quadruple the spending. Well, my friends, this is closer to what happens once, once the economy, let's just say, for example, what happens when the economy is really badly the government tries to spend and spend and spend. If you have a multiplier of 
What's that saying about the efficiency of government spending? What's it saying when you have such a small multiplier? Would you want to be doing, would you want to be increasing your government expenditure if you've got a multiplier of 0.25? So the government's going to go into debt, but your grandchildren are going to have to pay, and it's only getting an increase in output of a quarter of the amount that it's spending. Does that seem like a good trade-off to you? And what happens if it's determined that monetary policy for the same amount of debt would be this way? What happens if the government prints money so it has to go into debt the same amount. But what happens if, through monetary policy, you're able to stimulate the economy, say, 1.2 times? Would you use monetary policy or fiscal policy, government spending? 1.2 times monetary versus 0.25 fiscal and the same amount of debt? You're going to want to do monetary policy. And this is happening. At certain points in the business cycle, fiscal policy is not as good as it was during other points in time in the business cycle. The economy is doing really, really poorly. For example, if the economy is going down, 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 and the government decides to spend, 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 At a certain point, you get, what's that term? Something, something returns. The diminishing return. You get diminishing returns on government expenditure. Just like you end up getting diminishing returns on almost any type of expenditure program. And the math is, I believe, don't quote me, as the economy gets worse and worse and worse, Government spending is not as effective. I believe, not certain. Okay. Just, just for your own reference, the expenditure multiplier varies depending on where you are in the business cycle and, of course, how efficient markets are. There you go. We go right back to the beginning. If markets are efficient and there's no corruption, the system works rather well. But as soon as you have inefficient markets and a little bit of corruption, fiscal policy, monetary policy is not going to work as it was forecast. Okie dokie, example three. Calculate the change in real GDP. Demanded, one decimal. If the marginal propensity to consume, oh, 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 MPC, is 0.73, and the government changes total spending by 82. Well, government autonomy. Autonomous government multiplier, delta Y by delta G is the same as delta GDP or RGDP by delta G. And in this case, that's equal to 1 over 1 minus, as we said before, MPC. This implies that delta GDP is going to be delta G over 1 minus MPC. And that's 82 over 0 0.7, 1 minus 0 0.73, 82 
over 0 0.27, and that's 303.703 repeated. Therefore, real GDP demanded increases $303.7. If government spending increases by 82, given 73% of disposable income is spent by consumers. So, analysis, we're going into a recession, two different economies, one has an MPC of 0.75, the other has an MPC of 0.25. Which economy? is going to benefit more from increases in government expenditure. The economy with an MPC of 0.75 or 0 0.25? 0 0.75. 0 0.75. Because? The greatest MPC is the best denominator. Can you put that into English using non-mathematical terms? What, what is, you, you're talking to your five, your grade five cousin. How do you explain 0.75 versus 0.25 MPC? In English to your grade five cousin. Missing out on proportion. What's MPC in English? That's, that's not English, that's math. Okay, it's, it's math in English, I'll give you that. <laughs> in English, your grade five cousin. Explain MPC. Okay, let's make believe that your grade five cousin understands what a proportion is. I think proportion is. Maybe that's grade six, but you're a good teacher, so you'll be able to show a glass that's half, that's three quarters full, and a glass that's one quarter full. So. How much of your how much, what, how, the proportion, the little abs, or your pocket, pull out your big fat water bill because you're now a millionaire because you passed this course and you've got only good things ahead of you and you give all of yourself. You show them a, a fat stack of, of money and you say proportion, if the government, if you give everyone this much, 0.75 means that on average people in the economy spend this thickness over and over and over again. Otherwise, 0.25 they only spend this much over and over again. Okay. So people spend more of their disposable income. If you have an economy where, pe where actors spend more, a greater proportion of their disposable income, then fiscal policy is going to be more desirable than in an economy where people save more of their disposable income. Spend more of their disposable income versus save more of their disposable income. That would be a good exam question. It's not on the exam, though. But that's, there's an example 
of an exam question. Compare two economies, get, you're given two economies, two different MPCs, where is fiscal policy more likely to produce a beneficial outcome? There's a kind of an example for that quit for the final exam. It's an analysis. Given a situation, what's the best outcome? Okay. Hmm. Find the change in GDP given MPC, a change in G, and a change in T. So what's happening here? What happens to standard of living, or the amount of output, or the amount of spending, because it's all the same at equilibrium. The government is going to increase taxes, total amount of taxes, because it needs to spend more. This is what you call political suicide. Because if the economy is going into recession and you're going to increase taxes so that you can spend more, that's a good way to be voted out of office. Not in Canada. We don't do that here. But in civilized parts of the world, they do that. <laughs> and I'm being facetious, by the way. Okay, we're looking at the trick here, the trick here is to realize that the government, the trick here is to realize that MG, MT is equal to MG minus one. And I should have put that in here. MG government expenditure multiplier. But I've got it up above anyways, so just saving some space. So the change in GDP is going to equal the change in G over 1 minus MPC. And then It's going to be minus the change in taxes times mg minus 1. A little bit different. All of a sudden, oh, wait a minute. Let me ask you a question. Uh, what? Uh, I, I'm confused, professor. What's the sign? What's the sign on the the tax multiplier, less than zero. But, but delta t times the tax multiplier, the tax, this is, that's not less than zero. How do you know? This is, let's say you didn't have time to study everything. How do you know this is the right beginning equation? You, you remember more taxes, less spending. It's, it's, it's a negative correlation. It's, it's a negative. How do you know this is right? Where's the negative? I don't see a negative mt. I see mg minus 1, and mg is positive. Sounds about right. Oh, but not quite. I think it's that negative minus sign there. Let's find out.
Hmm, now you've got me thinking. Well, let's, let's see. Let's just find out. We'll get back to that. So what we have here, delta G, is, so this is the same as delta G, 1 minus MPC, minus delta T, 1 over 1 minus MPC minus 1. So the way I've done this, your answer, your answer was thinking. Yeah. Uh, your answer was on the right track, but here's the minus sign. Because you're subtracting out the multiplied, the multiple of the taxes from the multiple of the government expenditure. Okay, no worries. So we've got 100 minus 1 minus 0 0.55. Delta T is 10. 1 minus 0 0.55. That gives us 100 over 0 0.45 minus 10, 0 0.45. That's 222.2 repeated minus 10 times 2.2 repeated minus 1. That's equal to 222.2 minus 12.2 repeated. And that's 210. Therefore, aggregate output increases 210.0. If government expenditure, if government spending increases 100 with an increase in taxes of 10, given that 45% of disposable income is spent. So the key to doing this is two, two points. First, delta G times mg minus delta T times mt. And mt is mg minus 1. Hmm. Mm. Questions? I'm thinking that I put that minus sign there. The question is, I did it differently in my video. The key is, so taxes increased. So 
to answer your question is, how come this isn't negative? Because what I did was, so taxes have gone up. The algebra is that mt is equal to mg minus, minus 1. And I've said before, well, mt is less than 0. So how is it that this is not less than 0? What I've done is I've treated it less than 0 by putting the negative sign in front that it's reducing the total amount of real GDP. It's a different way of doing the same thing. How would I get around? How, how do I alter this to do it this way? Put an absolute. Yep. I'm going to have to get closer. Hmm, that works. Okay. So here, again, what's the increase? What is the increase that's due to the change in government minus the decrease that's due to the change in taxes? Okay. Maybe this will help. Balanced budget. It used to be, it used to be, you would hear this term all the time. We, in Canada, the budget comes out in March. I think it's March. Hmm. It used to be that the government will come out and say, we're introducing a balanced budget for this year. Balanced budget? What's that? Balanced budget is an increase or decrease in taxes is covered by an increase or decrease in government. So if taxes go up 100, government spending goes up 100. They offset. So we're paying for... So, the analysis question. Is the government going into debt if it's introducing a balanced budget? Is the government going into a deficit? Or is the government going into a further amount of debt if it's a balanced budget? Delta T equals delta G. Is the amount of debt in the economy going up, down, or staying the same? Or another way to say it, is the increase in taxes being, is the increase in government spending being offset by the increase in tax revenue? What does a balanced budget mean? Delta G equals delta T. Is that imply that there's more debt, less debt, or the same amount of debt in the economy? Answer. Same thing. Now here's the cool part. Huh? 
This used to happen a lot in the 80s, late 80s. Earlier, yeah, late 80s? Pre early 70s, later 80s, when the economy got back to normal after the financial problems of early 80s and the oil embargo of the late 70s. Okay. Let. Now, delta G equals delta T, and MPC is 0 0.75, one decimal answer. Okay. Hmm. Okay, since mt is equal to mg minus 1 and delta g equals delta t, well, what's the change in output due to the government increasing its expenditures? Well, that's delta g times mg. What's the actual decrease, or what's the change in real GDP given a change in taxes? That's delta T times mg minus 1. So delta Y is equal to delta G plus delta T, which is delta G times mg minus there's that, there's that minus sign again for you. That's the trick to this. Minus delta G times mg minus 1. Pull out the delta Gs, and you're left with mg minus mg plus 1. Because the minus times multiplied by a minus gives a plus, minus... Multiplied by the positive gives mg. Hmm. These cancel. And you're given change in government expenditure of 100. What's that mean? Aggregate output increases 100 given a balanced budget. I see some people massaging their chins. Hmm. What's that mean? So what does it mean when there's a balanced budget? What happens to the standard of living in the economy when there's a balanced budget? Another way to say it, what happens to the change in output when there's a balanced budget? The standard of living goes up or the change in output goes up or the change in income goes up by how much? or by how much government expenditure increases. So delta G is equal to delta T. So, so this is, this is, this used to be what was done from a positive. What's cool here is, has, has the government gone into debt? Were there into debt? Remember, debt is long term. Has the government put a burden on your grandchildren? No, because delta T is equal to delta G. The amount of taxes that taxes have paid for government spending. And yet, and so your grandchildren don't have to pay more in taxes. And yet, we're all better off. That's why this is cool. 
increase in spending is covered by increases in taxes, no one in the future suffers, but everyone in the present is better off, which would tend to make you think that if everyone in the present is better off, then making a lot of assumptions, everyone in the future is going to be better off as well. So there's a lot of assumptions that go into that last point. So, balanced budgets are what you hope to see are what you hope to see because everyone's being better off, ends up better off in the end. Why is it not happening right now? <laughs> okay. It's not literally right now because I guess it's all the money to do. Why isn't this happening right now? Why aren't they using the balanced budget right now? Because expenditure is higher than what? Than taxes. Why would expenditures, government expenditures, be higher than taxes right now? What's causing that? Because the government is, yeah, because the government has got a lot of responsibility take care of its citizens and keep them relatively happy. There's already a lot of government expenditures. And why is that? Take it back to compare compare current output with PGDP. What is the level of current output? This is all in theory by the way. If revenue, if tax revenues on a pie A space should be or could be, what does that say about current output versus potential output? Which one is greater, current or potential? So what does that mean? So potential is greater than current output. So what does that say about the level of slack or unemployment in the economy. It, it's greater than natural. What was the word that I used in there? It begins with an S. Slack. I used the word slack because that's the unemployment that we don't see. The people that have three part-time jobs that want to be full-time, or the people that have given up looking for a job because they said, I don't need this. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just stay on employment insurance, or I'll take an early retirement, or I'll war. What's the third option? If, if you can't get unemployment and you can't take early retirement, but you're fed up, what's the other option you have? Illegal trade. Think that's happening now? Think it, think it's happening everywhere? When the economy goes down, what happens to black market activity? It goes up. That ends up producing slack. That is shown in the economy by slack, meaning that there's people that are not working, but they're making money. Or they want to be working, but they can't get a job. So they, and even though the unemployment rate is very low right now, there's, there's people that are not working, that want to be working, but just don't, and what they end up doing is getting into some illegal activity. And I'll leave it right there. Okay. Okay. So why aren't they doing it right now? They can't pay for it. Well, they have to spend more than they can actually take in. And why is that? Maybe unemployment, the unemployment numbers aren't <coughs> accurate. Get it down there. And there's increase in black market activity. So that means that they're not, so the, the monies that would be going into tax revenue are just going into people's pockets. 
there's an explanation why they're not one of many possible multivariate explanations. Good question. Example six. Calculate, I put an O here for the open economy multiplier. So far, we've only looked at a closed economy where we're only concerned about the multiplier with respect to the consumption habits of the people of the economy. Here, we're going to take into account the marginal tax rate, T, and the marginal propensity to import. There's no questions except for this one. Maybe a true and false one on taxes and how they affect spending. But this is where things become complicated because the marginal tax rate is actually going to affect the slope of the consumption function and the marginal propensity to import is also going to, it doesn't affect the consumption function but it does affect aggregate expenditure function. It's going to change the slope of the aggregate expenditure curve, which means that it ends up changing the slope of the aggregate demand curve. But I'm not going to torture you with that kind of a question. What happens to the slope of the curve? No, 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 no. Keep it simple. If taxes go up, are you going to be spending less of your disposable income or more? Less. If you want to, if you change your mind and you want to buy more imported goods versus domestic goods, how is that going to change the slope of the curve? You're ultimately going to be spending less given your income you spend less on domestic and more on foreign. So that's going to change, so probably flatten the curve. Both times, taxes and imports is going to flatten the curve. Just for some of you who like to practice math in your sleep. Okay, so the, the open economy Multiplier equals, and be careful with this. Make sure you write the equation in your mind in big letters. So this is one minus bracket MPC times one minus T minus MPM. In the textbook, the first equation for this is not the same as I have here. I don't like the way they did it in the textbook. But I can guarantee you this works. So, this gives us 1 minus bracket 0 0.75 times 1 minus 0 0.30 minus 0 0.05. So what's the marginal tax rate? Well, on average, what percent, what percent of your income goes to taxes in this economy? What percent goes to taxes? 30. And on average, how much of your income is spent on imports? 5%. And let's translate this. That's 0 0.1 minus bracket 0 0.75 times 0 0.70 minus 0 0.05. Here's a good place to go wrong. What, what goes first, the multiplication or the subtraction? 
Should be multiplication, I have seen alternative outcomes. And I've done them myself. So please, be careful with your grade four arithmetic, because if I can get it wrong, not saying you will though, just be careful. So that gives us one minus 0 0.75. Oh, I took that over from the other page. 0 0.70, 0 0.05. Oh, I don't do that once. Yeah, no big deal. I just like to copy it twice. And that gives us 0 0.5250. Minus 0 0.05, which gives us 1 over 1 minus 0 0.4750, which gives us 1 over 0 0.525, which gives us 1.9. The open economy multiplier is So more taxes, if there are more taxes, what happens to the multiplier? So more taxes means this goes up. Which means this goes, hold it, more tax, that doesn't go up. If there are more taxes, let's see, this goes if there are more taxes, this, this goes down. That means this goes down. That means this goes up. That means this goes down. More taxes decreases the multiplier. Less money available to be spent over and over and over and over again. More imports increase in imports. And let me get this out of the way. Keep it nice and clean. People want to buy more. Mercedes AMGs. More imports. Well, what happens then? This goes up. That means this goes down. That means this goes up. That means this goes down. That's tricky. That's tricky. Simply, more taxes or the willingness to buy more stuff from foreigners decreases the effectiveness of increased government expenditure to offset recessionary pressure. Last, crowding out. Crowding out is what happens when the government goes further and further into debt which eventually results in less loanable funds available for future investment. If there are less loanable funds, that is going to mean more competition for the remaining funds. More competition for the remaining funds for long-term investment means the price of long-term investment goes, if more people, if the same number of actors are competing for less available funds for future investment, then that means the, the cost of investment goes up because people are competing for the same amount of loans. And so if the cost of investment goes up, what actually happens to investment goes down. 
because it's more expensive. So the more the government goes into, the de into debt, the worse, in, the more and more it negatively affects the government's ability to get the economy restarted if a recession occurs. So look at what's happened right now. The government's been going further and further, hugely into debt in Canada. Hugely. What does this say about the pro what does this say about what should be happening to long run interest rates? Going up. An economy and and you can figure out the rest from there. If you really want to live in Canada in the next ten years, given that it's 37 million people, and it's increased the amount of long-term debt, a huge amount. That being said, all the economies in the world are doing the same thing. So, how to look at this, crowding out. If the, if the size of the circle is the full output potential of the economy, Usually, consumption is around, what, 70% of total expenditure, and investment, government, net exports, roughly this proportion. But as the economy grows, and the government spends more and more and more, the proportion that goes towards consumption, forget about and not so much for net exports, but for investment, they're going to be decreased. And what increases? The amount of government expenditure. So the government becomes a, how shall I say, more responsible for the amount of spending, more responsible, Increase government expenditure becomes a greater proportion of total GDP. So the government's spending more and you get to spend less because it's costing you more. An increased proportion of government expenditure, expenditure with respect to total, total potential output means that you have to increase the total amount of taxes. What does that mean? Marginal tax rates have to go up. What happens when marginal tax rates go up? Expenditure multiplier goes down. So the government then has to spend more and more and more to get the same change in real GDP. So the government, the more the government spends as a proportion of total output in the long run, the more it has to increase taxes. And therefore, the expected tax rate or the expected amount of taxes is going to increase over time. And what does that mean for your children? Expected standard of living, uncertain, but unless the aliens come or unless there's a new general artificial intelligence that's going to make all of our lives wonderful, I would say it's a negative. So, in summary, fiscal policy, fiscal policy, otherwise government increasing or decreasing government expenditure, it's done to offset business cycles. It's used to decrease the severity and the duration of a recession, for example. But it has limited effectiveness. 
given what's happened in 2008 and COVID-19, there needs to be a reevaluation of the effectiveness of government spending, and it's going to happen. Maybe. But I would suggest there needs to be some evaluation of how effective government spending is in the future. And why is this? Why does this all happen? Unforeseen events, black swan events. And these unforeseen events are responsible for increases in variability of the business cycle. So once it used to be you had a business cycle, usually recession, expansion, contraction, peak. It used to be like that. Oh, until about the 70s when we had an oil embargo. And then every once in a while we get a stock market crash. Usually we're going upwards in our trend of growth. But in the future, There are no guarantees. Thus ends 1BB3. Take, take a 15 minute, well, yeah. I'll make up one example exam question to give you an idea of just how complex it might be. Then come back in 15 minutes. So at 2, 2.40, We'll go through one question. Hi. Uh, so when the expected, when the future tax goes up, the expected standard of living goes down? You would think so. That, that, that is right, right? I put a question mark, but generally, yes. Okay. <laughs> you really need a tablet. It's a lot easier for taking notes, but... Yeah. Uh, professor, why uh, in balance budget, three will goes up? Because... Delta Y equals Delta G equals 100. Because of the difference in the multipliers, the difference. you've got a, a pot, you've got the, the one multiplier, put, put absolutes around that. For example, mm -hmm. you've got MG minus one because of the difference in those two multipliers of one positive, and it's on Delta G, the standard of living goes up or real GDP goes up, or real output goes up, the amount of government expenditure, because of the difference in the two multipliers. 